Hello, welcome to Ginger Ginge. Uh, now today we're going to be doing an unboxing video and a, a sort of installation video. So if you've watched my videos from oh, probably months and months ago when I first was started, you know I do have a marine fish tank and um, I've got quite a few corals in there. There's nothing special in there at the minute. I've just got sort of just plain coral in there. I've got a couple of fish uh, and I've got this sort of LED strip bar that goes across the top. Now the LED strip bar isn't that great. It's pretty crap to be honest. It's broken on me, this is the second time it's broken now, the blue LEDs on it have actually gone completely, they just don't work. So I wanted to com well, completely redo the whole tank, but I'm gonna start with the lights first and sort of work my way down. So what I've done is I've bought some brand new lights. So I thought rather than just putting them straight away, I'll make a video on them, just sort of show you why I chose them, things like that, and how I'm gonna set them up. So I haven't actually opened the boxes yet, I've got two lights. I haven't un opened the actual box, so I'm gonna be seeing it for the first time. You're gonna be seeing it, but hopefully I can get these set up, put on the tank, get them all functioning and working, and then we can we can see a difference it makes, so I can sort of show you a, a before and after of what the lights look like. So we jump straight into the unboxing. I, I can't wait, I've been waiting so long. The mount, I haven't done the unboxing, uh, so I've had these lights probably about two weeks now and I haven't done the unboxing yet because I was waiting for the mounting arm to come with it. I didn't want to just sort of get the light out and then wait for the arm. I thought I'd do it all in one go so it's been killing me to open these boxes but we're going to jump straight into it, get them set up and we'll see how they look. Oh, you can see me there. Hello. So these are the lights I've gone for. So they are the Red Sea Reef LED 90s. Um, I spent a lot of time sort of doing a lot of research on different lights, things like that. I've looked at sort of AI prime lights, I've looked at other sort of LED lights that are similar to this, and I just couldn't find one that I wanted basically. I just couldn't find one that had the right sort of things. Um, and I was watching a review on this the other day, and someone done a, a full breakdown review on this, and um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I couldn't fault this light in any way. Uh, it does come with a warranty as well, which is absolutely brilliant. I've got a three year warranty with it. So if anything does go wrong, I can send it back. And I've been using Red Sea stuff for years now. I, I, again, I can't fault Red Sea in any way, shape or form. Uh, the tank I've got upstairs is the Red Sea Reefer 350. And it's been absolutely bulletproof for me. I've, I can't say a bad thing about it at all. So this is one of the reasons why I went for the Reef LED. And also they gave like a four or five month update. So they had the, the light on it at the beginning, showed you the corals. Um, and then about four or five months down the line, it did an update on the tank of how the corals looked before and after. And the corals just looked absolutely unbelievable. They looked incredible. The colors were coming through perfectly. The growth on them was absolutely incredible. So that's why I've gone for one of these. Now, I didn't want to go overboard. I've got two for the minute. Um, I don't know if I'll need to get a third. I don't think I will, but I won't know until I get the lights up and have a look. But um, I've got two for my tank, and I think that should be plenty. Um, and also, I've got a, a Red Sea uh, Reef LED 90 mounting arm. I was looking at suspending this from the ceiling, but I have my fan on in my room 24 seven. I just like that air circulation. And I think if I was to have anything hanging from the ceiling, I'm just gonna have those lights moving about and things like that. And it's just not gonna be ideal for me. So that's why I've gone for the, the standard mounting arm and it comes in uh, various different sizes. I've gone for the one that is supposed to be the ideal size of my tank. So I'm hoping that's gonna sort of give me enough coverage for what I want. So we'll move the uh, mounting arm to the side. I'm gonna start off looking at the actual light. Honestly, I've been waiting so long for these to be opened, and I didn't want to open them because I wanted to do it all in one go. I have no patience as it is. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know I have no patience whatsoever. If I want something, I want it then and there. So for me to wait to open this has just been ridiculous. So the other good thing I like about this is that it's, it's Wi-Fi enabled, it's app enabled, so you can control everything through your phone. So whether you're at work or whatever, you can decide to turn the lights on and off. It does send you notifications as well, which is brilliant. So I'm guessing if something is wrong, then it will, it will come through on your phone. So first unboxing. So user manual, I'm probably gonna read this in depth just because setting this up, I think could be quite difficult. Um, with a lot of the Red Sea stuff that I've had, a lot of their, their manuals are, are pretty decent, to be honest. They they sort of talk you through everything step by step, things like that. So um, that's that's gonna be really important. 
This is the bit I've been waiting for. Oh, the suspense, come on. Whoa, look at that. That is huge. That LED there is, that is massive. I'd probably say it's about the same size, probably about the same size as a golf ball, that little bit there. It's absolutely incredible. So it does come with a three pin plug. So I bought this from uh, Charterhouse Aquatics just cause that's where I get um, quite a lot of my stuff from. I, I quite like Charterhouse Aquatics. They do price matches and things like that. So if you do find something cheaper, you can send them that link and then they'll, they'll obviously match that price. Um, delivery as well is absolutely brilliant. So I, I can't fault Charterhouse Aquatics in any way, shape or form. They're absolutely perfect. So there's nothing else in the box I need to be worried about does have some sort of instructions on the back there, all the features and things like that. I'm not going to show you all that. If you want to find out more details about the light, you can just go on Google and, and do it for yourself. There's plenty of videos on there um, of how to set up as well on YouTube and things like that. So this is the light. I love that. It's got the little logo in the centre there. That's the fan that's going to kick in. And I like the thing I liked about it well is it's got all these cooling vents. So it's the light should not get hot whatsoever. It's got all the vents there to cool itself down with. So there shouldn't be any risk of this overheating. Um, that's really cool. I don't know if you can see that there. It's got like that domed effect. That was another thing that I liked about it. Just so it spreads that light out a lot, sort of diffuses it. That looks so cool, look at that, look at all that sparkliness in there. All the different colored LEDs, that is incredible. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so that's the main light. So the mounting bracket is gonna go onto this back piece here. So that's where it's gonna screw on. Um, and it's got like little sensors on here, little lights by looks fit, it's sort of whether it's plugged in, uh, settings, Wi-Fi, and I think this is a like a reset button or something like that. But yeah, I'm so excited. Look at that, it just looks so nice as well. It's just sleek, it's compact. It's black, so it's gonna match the fish tank that I've got. Oh, I'm so excited. So, it comes with a power, part of the power cable there. It looks like there's, especially this part here, there's like the, the power pack part. Um, there's plenty of cable there, so I think this should stretch quite a while, uh, far away if I need it to. So that's absolutely brilliant, I'm happy with that. So we'll have a look at the mounting arm now. So again, I've not opened these up yet. I've got two, but I've not had a look inside. I'm hoping these aren't gonna to be too hard to put together. I don't think that. I've not watched any videos on the mountain arms. This is something that I just sort of took a chance with. And I tried to find other mountain arms, but this is the only one I could find for the actual uh, reef LED light. So, what's that stuck in there? So there's multiple pieces. Oh, there you go. There's nothing else left in there. So this, rather than having instructions in the actual box, it's got the instructions on the side by the looks of it. Um, so I'm gonna have to pay close attention to that. But to us, I think it should be quite self-explanatory when putting this together. Packed really well, you can see there's loads of foam padding everywhere. So it's not gonna be rattling around. And to be honest, this, the box itself didn't weigh too much. It was pretty light. Um, so I'm guessing this is made of aluminium. It's all anodized as well in black. So it's got a real nice sleek look to it. Really, really hefty for what it is. It looks really well built. It's like you can't see any, I'm guessing these are all, there's no weld lines by the, I don't know. No, I don't think there's any weld lines. So I don't know if these are sort of cast in one whole piece or not, um, but they look absolutely pucker. So we've got a few pieces in here. So I'm gonna have a look at the instructions. Okay, so part of this is already set up for me by the looks of it. So this section here, which is like the, the lever arm that looks like, um, that's already set up for me. So that would normally slot into this section and you'd pop these two screws in. All you're gonna need is one screwdriver. I'm just gonna check to make sure they're nice and tight. Yeah, they're spawn. Good, so next step is we need to, we need to attach this. So that looks like that must be I'm guessing the light goes on the end here and that's like that sort of stop to sort of stop that, that light from going down in further. So we need to place this on. So what you do is you've got this top part of the pivot and you've got this long part. You've got the, the two bigger holes at the top and the two, two small holes at the bottom. Uh, the bigger holes are gonna slot into that piece. So 
that's a nice snug fit as well so even if you need to secure it it's, it's, it's already pretty secure but the screws that go in there are just going to sort of secure even more and you, it comes with a, a number of these little screws here uh, I, I think there's two spare by the looks of it as well I've had a quick count of them and it looks like there are two spare ones so that's that's pretty decent um, when you're using these screws you always got to be careful you don't cross thread them so when you're putting things like these in don't don't force it if it's not going to go then don't force it they should just easily go in nice and simple like that and then that way you know you're not going to cross thread them or anything like that so what i'm going to do is going to tighten them up now i don't think you need to do these ridiculously tight it's literally just hand tight so once you've screwed them up just nip it up enough so it's not going to turn anymore you don't want to sort of be over tightening these because if you need to take them apart for whatever reason you can start damaging screw heads and things like that so that's on so i'm guessing that is our main bracket part there so the light's going to go on the end here this is the part that mounts onto the tank so you can see that part there so if this is like the inside of the fish tank this is the back of the fish tank this is going to hang on like that and then this top piece here is going to slot into that section like that and that's going to be your sort of back brace against the fish tank basically so there's a couple of screws here so it comes with these little screw things there they sort of go into the back of that like that and they they hook in place they don't actually screw into this by the looks of it there's like a little a little bit on the end that doesn't screw in it's literally just there to sort of hold it in place so you can see on the end there there's like that little that little nipple bit sticking out that's just sort of going to go into the back of that plate so that's just going to go into the back of here and that's just going to hold it in place basically just to stop that from moving up and down so that's a nice little feature so we don't need that part just there so now we need to fix in place the actual mounting part so this piece looking at the instructions uh, you need this rounded edge here so again camera doesn't want to focus so this rounded edge here is the bit that needs to face upwards so yeah where you've got that mounting part that's going to pop into there just like that nice and snug then you can see you've got the screw holes underneath again it uses the same screws throughout the whole thing pretty much it's pretty pretty easy to work out again don't don't over tighten these screws when you do it and ease them into the holes there's nothing like ramming something into a tight hole and then that's securely fast in place so it's all slowly starting to come together so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the next piece so this is like a little bracket that attaches to the light and what this is going to do is that's going to go on the top there just like that and then this is going to enable you to be able to sort of pivot that light to where you want it to be so you can angle the light slightly so that's a really nice feature I like that it's not just sort of all fixed in place so this actually screws straight onto the light so you can see we've got the two little holes here and you've got that there so you need this rounded part on the top of this little part here it says that rounded edge there you want that to be facing upwards so the LED light is going to face down you want that part facing up and it comes with two smaller screws again they're just going to pop in place make sure you don't force them in make sure they go in nice and easily again you don't want to over tighten these too much if you over tighten these there's a risk that you can sort of shred the top of that bolt and it's just going to cause you problems down the line if you need to change it for whatever reason so just hand tight is enough and you can see that section is just on there just like that absolutely pucker so then all we've got to do is attach this part to the uh, the main light so that sort of pops into place there now there's two little pieces like this and they're, they're not screws or anything like that they're literally just like a um, like a, a friction pop lock sort of thing so all these are going to do is in the little sides where the the hinge is you're just going to pop those in there sort of give them a little wiggle and then once you turn them a little bit give them a little bit more pressure you'll hear that click and that's secured in place so you're going to do that for both sides pop both them in again with this you don't want to force it sort of make sure you've got everything lined up place them in if they don't quite want to pop in turn them a little bit give it a press 
and then they should pop in place. And you don't need to turn them to lock them or anything like that. They literally just press in place. And then in the top, you'll see here, there's this little little hole there. There's another screw, which is uh, the longest one in the, in the box. That's gonna go into that. And there's also a tiny, tiny little piece here. It's got like a little curve there, you can see. And what that's gonna do is where this bit on the top of the light is curved, you're gonna place that on the top there so that curve fits on top of the curve. And then this top bolt, you're gonna place that in the top. Again, don't force it, just let it ease into place. And then once that finds its, set, its seated spot, you then take your screwdriver and all you've got to do is just tighten that down again. And once this is on the actual fish tank, it's probably best to adjust it on the fish tank so you know which angle you want it at. Um, because I've got two of them, I am going to have to sort of <laughs> the OCD is going to kick in. So trying to get these both perfectly level is going to be a bit of a mission for me. But that I've screwed it up tight, but it's not too tight, and that's that's holding that line in per place perfectly. Basically, it's not dropping down or anything like that. So that's absolutely spot on. I'm really really happy with that. So there's only a few bits left. So like I said. I don't think I've left these out, but you do get two spare bits, so it's always worth keeping hold of them, not losing them. So I'm just gonna pop them back in the bag, in the box, um, just so they don't go missing and go walkies anywhere. Uh, the other one of these screws, I'm gonna pop that in the back of the plate, just so I don't lose that. And the last thing I need to do is I just need to tidy this lead up. So it comes with these little caps in the uh, in the box, and you notice that there's a there's a hole in this section. So this is so you can pass the wire underneath through that hole, and then run it down the back, and it just keeps all the wires out of the way, keeps it looking neat and tidy. And that's just a, another feature I like, to be honest. There's a lot of these lights that have the cable sort of running around, and it just just looks messy in my opinion. So it's it's all about sort of hiding all that away. Um, it would have been nice if you could have run the cable on the inside. So it was completely hidden, but um, I don't know how easy that would have been with this. And obviously you've got the connector on there, so I'm guessing it does make it quite difficult. But um, to be honest, this is gonna be just fine, I think. As long as the cable is sort of tucked away and hidden, you're not really gonna notice it that much. So all I've done is I've passed that cable through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and straighten that cable out as much as I can twist it around just so there's no sort of kinks or anything in it and what I've got here is you'll see there's like a little groove on this cap so that's what the wire actually goes into so I'm going to pop that on there make sure the wires lined up with it I'm just going to pop that in place make sure that wire is nice and straight and I'm just going to pop that in just like that. So that secures that wire in place then, that wire's not gonna come loose, it's not gonna pull through or anything like that. And all I'm gonna do for the top is the same. So I'm gonna straighten that wire out so it's gonna run down the back of the light, sort of get any kinks out of the wire. And again, you've got like the little uh, groove on this little cap. That's just gonna go over that wire. And again, I'm just gonna snap that into place. And that's it, that locks that wire in place then, so there's nowhere for that wire to go. And all this bit does is that's gonna hang down the back, it's gonna be hidden, and it's gonna end up going behind your fish tank. So, that is the overall build. I'm really, really happy with this, really, really excited. The other two bits are really easy to up, so you've got the little, the little transformer box here, that's just gonna plug in for a little switch there. And then you've got the power cable here with a little three pin plug which literally just goes into that box there. So really, really simple to, to knock up. I've put this together in about, oh gosh, probably taking about 10 minutes in general, not even that. Don't forget I've been doing the filming and explaining stuff, but if you were to do this yourself, you'd have this knocked up in phew, five minutes easily. So next stage is we're gonna get this part onto the tank, get it all mounted up, and um, yeah, we'll have a look at uh, what it looks like when it's all switched on. So you can see I've got the, the light taken off the top now. So, um, yeah, this is the tank. Now, I wouldn't say I necessarily neglect it. Um, I just haven't done a lot with this tank. So um, I haven't really touched any of the coral in there. All the coral's just sort of been left to naturally grow at its own rate and do whatever it wants. Um, the sand bed, uh, I originally took the sand bed out. I left just a little bit of the sand in there. You can see it's just underneath the rocks. 
I sort of left that in there just for the rocks to sort of have something to sell, but I took most of the sand bed out just because I was having too many issues with it, but I will be putting a new sand bed in this soon. Um, so yeah, I still do water changes, not as often as I should. I probably do water changes every two to three weeks, if that. And again, they're only minimal water changes because I don't have a high stock in here. Um, I don't really worry about the ammonia and stuff like that and I've got a sump and a refugium and stuff like that deals with all the other stuff so I don't really worry about it too much but now that I'm sort of buffing it up I'm doing it a full revamp um, I am going to be doing everything on it weekly doing, doing multiple updates on it and the corals um, I'm going to be doing a big overhaul on the sump soon so it's going to be a big video on that it's going to be a few upgrades that I'm making down there so it's going to be well worth a watch so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and this is where we're going to mount the light so i think i'm going to mount it sort of here so i've got two lights so i'm going to mount them at sort of one third interval so one over here and i'm going to mount one there um, and i think that's going to give me the best coverage for the tank so uh yeah i'm excited to get on it's going to be quite hard to do just because i'm doing it one-handed so uh, I'm, I'm worried i'm going to drop over the light of the camera into the into the water but i'm pretty confident that i can do it so um yeah, we're gonna get in there, give it a go, and then hopefully when we turn it on, it's gonna transform this tank. I might set the other one up as well, just so you can see them both in place, but I'm not gonna show both, because once you've seen one set up, you, you pretty much know what's going on. So let's get this one set up, hopefully, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. There they are, check them out. They look absolutely awesome. And they look very, very straight as well, <laughs> which is what I like. I spent a while adjusting them both, but um, I think I managed to get them both set pretty straight. Um, I don't think I can get them much straighter than that. It's not coming on the camera, but they are honestly dead, dead straight. Now, ignore this wall. As you can see, I'm in the process of painting this room. It's very echoey in here because I've emptied everything out. So yeah, I'm in the process of painting. I'm probably not going to be painting behind this just because I can't move it. I'm not breaking it down, so I'm going to paint what I can around it. And the back of it is just going to be left whatever colour it is behind there. So but I don't care about that. It's, this tank's never going to move while I'm here. This tank will always be in this position just because I can't risk moving it, basically. But um, yeah, so that's the lights in place. Check them out. Obviously, this wire needs tidying up and things like that, but that's something I'm going to do further down the line. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. I love the look of it as well. It makes the room look so much bigger. That uh, bar I had across the top before sort of enclosed the room a bit. This just makes it look wide open. So I'm probably gonna have to put something up on the wall here just to sort of box it all. I'll probably chuck some pictures or something like that. But yeah, that, I really like the look of that. I think it really goes well with the tank as well. Because the tank is roomless, it, it's, it's sort of freestanding, free floating. And I really like the effect that that arm has given it. Um, glad I didn't go with the hanging lights now this is pretty much exactly what I, what I wanted basically so next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these added onto the the app so you can have uh, an app downloads on your phone uh, iPad tablet whatever you use it's on both and I'm really really excited to uh, to get this downloaded so I had a little play with this just to make sure I knew what I was doing. So if you download this app called ReefBeat, um, it's got it all in the manual here. Everything you need to know is in this manual that it comes with. So it's, it's really easy to set up if you just follow this. The thing I like about it is you can do like the manual adjustment. So even though you've got it on a setting, I'm just waiting for that to connect up to the lights. Even though you can set up to like a, a general runtime of sort of the sunrise, uh, different peaks during the times and then sunset, you can put moon phases in. Um, you can even have cloud cover so you can have it so the lights slowly dim and get bright just so it, it sort of simulates clouds going over. You, you, can, you can do whatever you want basically, it's absolutely incredible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little play with this now. I'm just gonna check to see if they do work. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if I'll turn that back down. You can just see, oh, the blue light. So we've got some white light. And then we've got some moonlight. Oh, that's incredible. So I know they're both synced up, which is fantastic. I'm really, really happy about that. So what I'm gonna do now is I've put these all to zero 
Um, I'm going to quickly set up a little uh, routine for it, so a little light show that it's going to go through, and then uh, yeah, we'll show you what that bit is. So um, this one here, I started to have a little play with. So you can set your schedule. So I sort of want mine to start at half past nine, just because if I'm not working or I've been doing a late shift, uh, I don't want these lights to come on bright and early in the morning, just because I'm, I'm not going to be too happy about that. So I'm going to start them off at 9.30, they're going to start off on zero, and then I'm going to move to this next one, they're going to sort of wrap up to about 10.30, um, which is going to be about, I want that to be about 50%. I'm making this up at the minute. You can go online and people have got hundreds and hundreds of settings and things like that, that you can follow and it's just finding one you like. This does have some preset ones in it, but I'm just going to mess about with my own little one at the minute. So I'm going to add another point in. I'm going to say once it gets to, let's say 11.30, it's sort of coming up to midday, so that's when I want the light to be at its brightest. Now I'm not going to run these lights at full whack. Just because I think the, the more you run them at full whack, there's more chance of something going wrong. Uh, they're not going to last as long as well. So I'm never going to have these at 100%. Um, I'm probably going to stick to 85% max. Um, unless I'm doing some filming and stuff like that, then I might crank out to 100 just because it looks nice for the camera. But um, for now, I'm going to sort of whack it down not as, not as high. Um, so for this setting here, I'm going to set this at 730. I'm going to set that at 50%. So you can see that sort of matches, um, and you can see this one is half 10, this one's half 11, so I'm going to make that one, uh, let's add a new point at say 6.30, and again we're going to make that 85%. Since we've got a nice even graph there, that makes my uh, OCD happy. This little moon uh, section down here, this little moon phase, I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, I don't know if that was as standard or not, but that was just on there when I set this up, so I'm going to leave that alone. So that's the blue lights covered. I'm going to quickly set the white light up. Um, the white lights, I'm not too fussed about because uh, it, it looks a lot nicer with the blues. The whites are there just to sort of brine it out, but the blue is what the, the coral was actually used and things like that. So the white lights, I'm not too fussed about. They're probably going to go to about 65%. So we'll do 70% just to be on the safe side, just so it does make it quite bright. Um, let's change that one to 70%. Now I will be doing a lot more research on this. I'm going to be doing a lot of video um, research on YouTube, just finding out what different people use for their parameters and things like that. But this is basically the this thing I'm gonna go with for now, if this will focus. Um, so it's, it's nothing too crazy. So that's how I've got it set up. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save. Actually no, before I click save, well, I'm gonna press this little play button. What that play button does is it gives you like a, a little run through of what it's gonna actually look like. So let me get the camera set up and then uh, we'll see how it looks. Now that looks amazing. The difference with those lights compared to the light I had on it is absolutely incredible. I cannot believe how good it looks. I'm so, so happy with my choice of light. They're not absolutely uh, bank breaking. I think I paid 350 quid each for these. Um, Char I've actually got these on a finance option and Char Aquatics are absolutely brilliant. They charge 0% APR. They're, they're fantastic, the company. Um, so definitely go check them out. They're well worth having a look at. Um, if they want to sponsor me, you know, just, just DM me, same with Red Sea, Red Sea, if you're out there and you're watching and uh, you're looking for a new sponsor, just, you know, think about me while you're there. But no, honestly, these are absolutely brilliant. Like I've said before, Red Sea products for me, in my opinion, are absolutely brilliant. I cannot fault them in any way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I'm just so excited to what I'm going to do with this tank. Now that I'm sort of putting a bit more effort into it, a bit more thought into it, I've got loads of modifications I'm going to do to the tank. Once I get my 3D printer fixed or get a new one ordered, I can start making some stuff for it. So yeah, there's going to be loads coming for it. But check that out. Now remember, this isn't on 100% blue um, and it looks a lot brighter on camera 
um, is there's like a this area here it's a lot more white than blue um, in real life it is more bluey purpley but to us, even on camera I think it looks absolutely pucker but yeah as you can see I've not really done a lot with this tank um, this main power head is off at the minute just because I, I didn't want it blown around but you can see I've not got anything special in here I've got this uh, African Kenya tree coral I think it's called uh, I've got some pulsing zenia up there um, I've got this little leather coral down here I don't really know what it was it just came attached with that rock and just started growing so that's that's in there um, oh and I do have some I've got some GSP up here as well which is all sort of sunken in just because the lights have been going on and off but yeah um, that's about it really I don't really have a lot in the tank like I said I've sort of I've not neglected it I've just sort of left it to do its own thing I was originally going to make this a fish only tank um, all the coal that's in there I was just going to leave in there and whatever happened to it happened to it and I was just going to pack it full of fish um, and I've sort of changed my mind now I've sort of gone down the other route that I, I want to pack this out with both so I want as many fish in here as possible but I also want as much coral in here as possible um, and you can see here, I've got my little yellow tang. I've had him for about six years now. He's done so well. Uh, I've got this other little tang down here. I don't know what the name of him is. Um, yeah, I do not have a clue. If you know what he is, then let me know. Um, but I just bought him randomly uh, years ago. And they, they're the, the only two that have really been in here for ages. I had a six line rass in here. Um, and I, I think that was quite old when I bought it. That lasted a couple of years and then that sort of slowly disappeared. And I've had one or two other fish in here that have sort of either, one of them has jumped out. It's like I had a, when I had a sand bed near, I had a little uh, sand filter goby in here. Um, he decided to jump out one day, which yeah, that happens. Because I don't have a lid on it, it's all open. Um, and I had, uh, what else did I have? I had a, I think I had a copper band, um, oh, I don't know what they're called. It was a, one of those copper band fish. Um, I bought that because I had a few Aptasia in here and I thought he'd get rid of the Aptasia and this little guy here, he, he sort of rules the roost and yeah he just bullied the poor thing to death so um, I had to eventually get rid of that fish because of him. But the other thing I've got in here has got my little uh, clownfish. This was in that little nano tank that I made. That tank's now been broken down and I'm thinking I'm going to change it because this was going to be my fish only tank. That little uh, nano tank was going to be a reef tank and I've changed my mind completely now. I want to get a little pea puffer to put in there because they are so cute and I'll get a couple other things to put in there with him. But yeah, now this is going to be my mixture. I need to get him a little girlfriend or boyfriend. It's 2021 now, you know, anything goes. So I need to get this little chap, um, a little friend, so I will be getting that eventually. But yeah, I'm so happy with the way these look. And I think two is absolutely perfect. There's there's no spots. Like towards the end of the tank, it's sort of a little bit darker, but I'm not really gonna be putting any corals on, that, on those edges. So I'm not too worried about that. The main focus is this sheer ledge. If I come around to the other side. So you can see, if I try and get the right angle, this is what it looks like from the side. It's sort of a, a gradual slope that comes down. And the whole idea of this is I wanted it to be like a sort of, like the edge of a, a cliff that drops down into the abyss. Um, I think I got the idea from Finding Nemo where they get to the edge of the cliff and it's just all blue water out and it drops down. It really is quite a view. Yep. Unforgettable. And that's sort of Finding Nemo is probably my favourite film. But yeah, that's where I was going with this. So it's got that sheer rock face. It slowly slants. I've got to add sort of some more rock in this corner. Um, well, I'm, probably, I'm probably going to break this piece in half and put half over there, half over there. So it sort of makes a like a horseshoe shape, like a U shape. So the rock face comes out here, comes out here. This whole middle bit is going to be sand, um, so I can put some coral in the sand. And then because this is like a, a, sh a sloping edge, I can place corals all around here and they should be able to get enough light, um, which is absolutely brilliant. If you look at these lights as well, they literally position perfectly above that rock. So you can see there, that's the ledge. So all of that ledge is illuminated perfectly. If I need to, I can sort of tilt these lights down a little bit more to face that rock edge. Um, but to be honest, I think they're perfect just where they are. I really, I just can't complain at all. They're absolutely spot on. Check out that shimmer. Look at that. That's absolutely incredible. I love that. That looks so cool. 
but yeah that's all i've got for you today um, i hope you've enjoyed it now i've not gone into this with too much depth uh, just because it is so simple to set up honestly anybody could set this up it's really really easy um, but if you do have any questions anything like that on setting up the actual uh, mounting arm to setting the light up with all the the information on the app and things like that then drop me a message down below uh, in, send me a message on instagram i'll always reply i can sort of give you a, a more in-depth step-by-step walkthrough if that helps but yeah it's it's more just getting this set up and showing it really but um i think this looks absolutely pucker i can't i can't wait to get this tank up and running properly now so next i'm going to be moving down into the sump the sump needs a lot of work again because i don't really do a lot of maintenance on it it's just basic basic down there so i'm going to be adding loads of new stuff in there so it's well worth following along i'm finally getting to this i've made a video on this a long long time ago um, and i've had a lot of people commenting and asking me when's the next video coming out or i need when are you doing an update they're now coming i've now got the money and the time and the effort to put into this so it's it's all slowly coming and um yeah it's going to be absolutely incredible so i hope you've enjoyed this please subscribe so you don't miss anything else that's going to come out with this tank there's going to be so many mods to it you know what i'm like i'm a bit of a tackle tart if you looked at all my other videos you know i just customize everything even if it doesn't need customizing i've still got to throw my own little spin onto it so it's well worth subscribing and following me along and um yeah this is going to be incredible. I cannot wait. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, bless me.